Hey y'all, Michelle Raza here with the Finding Yourself Book Club. Today we're going to continue with Robert Heinlein's Stranger in a Strange Land for our Science Fiction Saturday series. Um, please do like and subscribe, it really does help us little YouTubers. Um, and if you're interested in some more serious or self-help type stuff, we do have a few playlists for you. Um, the first of which is Coping with Emotionally Immature Parents by Lindsay Gibson. Second, we have one on relationships based on John Gottman's What Makes Love Last. We also have a few, uh, one coping with domestic violence, and that one focuses on the, um, oh man, I lost the name of the wheel. It's like a power and control wheel. Um, and then lastly, there's one on, besides this one, which is Stranger in a Strange Land, um, our science fiction Saturday playlist, there is one on John Gottman and his wife, Julie Gottman, and it actually has a lot of vid videos where they come out and talk about relationship stuff. So really cool and interesting stuff. Please do like and subscribe, tell your friends. Um, it really does help. Um, and also we just passed over 300 subscribers, so I'm very grateful to you guys. Um, I appreciate all of the love over here and all the comments, um, and especially the people who are really far away. It just, it feels special to be able to communicate with people across the world, which I know nowadays with the internet, it's instantaneous, but it, it's still really cool, like that, that the work that we're doing here has an impact on people all around the world. Um, and it is me that responds to your comments. Um, I don't have a staff or a team. I do have my partner, Penny, and she um, she's also a certified life coach, and she's also working in counseling centers, so she has a lot of varied experience. I think um, one of the last videos I told you guys, I'm, I'm seeking my LPC um, to be a certified counselor in addition to a life coach. So anyway, that was a lot of me blabbing. I will go on and continue reading Robert Heinlein's Stranger in a Strange Land for you. Chapter 5 <clears throat> Jill looked round-eyed. I've certainly had too many martinis, Ben. I would swear that you said that the patient owns the planet Mars. He does. He maintained occupation of it unassisted for the required length of time. Smith is the planet Mars. King president, sole civic body, what you will. If the skipper of the champion had not left colonists behind, Smith's tenure might have failed, but he did, and that, continue, that continues occupation even though Smith came to Earth. But Smith doesn't have to split with them. They are mere immigrants until he grants them Martian citizenship. Fantastic. It surely is. It's also legal. Honey, do you now see why so many people are interested in who Smith is and where he came from, and why the administration is so damned anxious to keep him under a rug? What they are doing isn't even vaguely legal. Smith is also a citizen of the United States and of the Federation by derivation, dual citizenship with no conflict. It's illegal to hold a citizen, even a convicted criminal, incommunicado anywhere in the Federation. That's one of the things we settled in World War III but I doubt if Smith knows his rights. Also, it's been considered an unfriendly act all through history to lock up a visiting friendly monarch, which is what he is, and not let him see people, especially the press, meaning me. You still won't sneak me in as a thumb-fingered electrician? Huh? You've got me worse scared than ever, Ben. If they had caught me this morning, what do you think they would have done to me? Mm, nothing rough, just locked you in a padded cell with a certificate signed by three doctors and allowed you mail on alternate leap years. They aren't mad, on you, mad at you. I'm wondering what they're going to do to him. What can they do? Well, he might just happen to die from G to fatigue, say. That would be fine out for the a fine out for the administration. You mean murder him? Tut tut, don't use nasty words. I don't think they will. In the first place, he is a mine of information. Even the public has some dim notion of that. He might be worth, an, <clears throat> worth more than Newton and Edison and Einstein and six more like him, all rolled into one. Or he may not be. I don't think they would dare touch him until they were sure. In the second place, at the very least, at the very least he is a bridge, an ambassador, a unique interpreter between the human race and the only other civilized race we have as yet encountered. That is certainly important, but there is no way to guess just how important. How are you on the classics? Ever read H.G. Wells' The War of the Worlds? A long time ago in school. Consider the idea that the Martians might decide to make war on us and win. They might, you know, 
and we have no way of guessing how big a club they can swing. Our boy Smith might be the go-between, the peacemaker, who could make the first interplanetary war unnecessary. Even if this possibility is remote, the administration can't afford to ignore it until they know. The discovery of intelligent life on Mars is something that, politically, they haven't figured out yet. Then you think he is safe? Probably, for the time being, the Secretary General has to guess and guess right. As you know, his administration is shaky. I don't pay attention to politics. You should. It's only barely less important than your own heartbeat. I don't pay attention to that either. Don't talk when I'm orating. The majority headed by the United States could slip apart overnight. Pakistan would bolt at a nervous cough, in which case there would be a vote of no confidence, a general election, and Mr. Secretary General Douglas would be out and back to being a cheap lawyer again. The man from Mars can make or break him. Are you going to sneak me in? I am not. I'm going to enter a nunnery. Is there more coffee? I'll see. They both stood up. Jill stretched and said, Oh, my ancient bones. And lordy, look at the time. Never mind the coffee, Ben. I've got a hard day tomorrow. Being polite to nasty patients and standing clear of interns. Run me home, will you? Or send me home. I guess that's safer. Call a cab. That's a lamb. Okay, though the evening is young. He went into his bedroom, came out carrying an object about the size and shape of a small cigarette lighter. Sure you won't sneak me in? Gee, Ben. I want to, but... Never mind, I wouldn't let you. It really is dangerous, and not just to your career. I was just softening you up for this. He showed her the little object. Will you put a bug on him? Huh? What is it? The greatest boon to divorce lawyers and spies since the Mickey Finn, a micro-miniaturized wire recorder. The wire is spring-driven so that it, can, it can't be spotted by a snooper circuit. The insides are transistors and resistors and capacitors and stuff, all packed in plastic. You could drop it out of a cab and not hurt it. The power is about as much radioactivity as you would find in a watch dial, but shielded. The wire is good for 24 hours. Then you slide out a spool and stick in another one. The spring is part of the spool, already wound. Will it explode? She asked nervously. You could bake it in a cake. But Ben, you've got me scared to go back into his room now. Unnecessary. You can go into the room next door, can't you? I suppose so. This thing has donkey's ears. Fasten the concave side flat against the wall. Surgical tape will do nicely. It picks up every word spoken in the room beyond. Is there a closet or something? She thought about it. I'm bound to be noticed if I duck in and out of the adjoining room too much. It's really part of the suite he's in. Or they may start using it. Ben, his room has a third wall in common with a room on another corridor. Will that do? Perfect. Then will you do it? Um, give it to me. I'll think it over and see how the land lies. Caxon stopped to polish it with his handkerchief. Put on your gloves. Why? Possession of it is slightly illegal, for a, a good for a short vacation behind bars. Always use gloves on it and the spare spools. And don't get caught with it. You think of the nicest things. Want to back out? Jill let out a long breath. No, I've always wanted a life of crime. Will you teach me gangster lingo? I want to be a credit to you. Good girl. A light blinked over the door. He glanced up. That must be your cab. I rang for it when I went to get you this. Oh, find my shoes, will you? No, don't come up to the roof. The less I'm seen with you from here on, the better. As you wish. As he straightened up from putting her shoes on, she took his head in both hands and kissed him. Dear Ben, no good can come of this, and I hadn't realized you were a criminal type. But you're a good cook, as long as I set up the combination. And I just might marry you if I can trap you into proposing again. The offer remains open. Do gangsters marry their malls? Or is it frails? We'll see. She left hurriedly. All right. So that's it for today. Um, they had a stop in the book, so I will stop as well. And we will pick up next Saturday. I hope you enjoy this series. It's just a bit of fun. Um, we have a lot more serious stuff that we like to talk about, but the weekends are for a bit of fun. Um, and then also Heinlein has some really cool ideas. I don't know if you're interested in his other works. Um, I kind of fell in love with this one and I read it a million times. I tend to do that with books though that I like. 
Um, so we'll continue on. And if you guys want to propose other books that are special to you um, for either our self-help type stuff or the science fiction Saturday series, please do comment and I will, you know, pick it up, take a read and, and possibly that'll be our next book. So take care y'all. See you next Saturday and have a good one.